Hey, what's up guys? It's Seb from Workbench, and this week we're going to create a node network in Cinema 4D. Last week we got a question about how to create a network animation similar to the one that's on screen currently. There's a lot of different ways on how to go about doing this. In our case, I opted to do a little more manual approach so that I could add a little extra secondary animation. Let me show you how I created it. So I'm going to start with creating just a basic single node. And then I'll show you how I created the rest of them. So I'm going to start with a new scene. So I'm going to start by creating my main node. I'm going to call it main. Then I'm going to create my second node. And I'm going to make that a little smaller. I'll drag it out here. And I'm going to make that the child of the main. Now in order to draw a line between these two, I'm going to use a tracer that can be found in the MoGraph menu. And then in the tracer, I'm going to set the tracer to connect objects. And then I'm going to drag in main and I'm going to drag in sphere. There's a couple settings in here that I want to get rid of. Trace vertices is one. And I'm going to turn off TP groups because we're not using thinking particles at all. So that's our basic first node. And since this is parented, I can key this here, and then I can zero out the Z, and it goes to zero. And my first node is animated. Now the second part is to create some nodes off of this one. Let me show you how I did that. So we're going to do some cubes. We're going to make them 25. And then I'm going to move them out in space. I'm going to create three of them. Then I'm going to make them a child of the sphere, which I'm going to rename node. 01, and then I'm going to call these sub 01, sub 02, and sub 03. Now I'm going to need three tracers, one for each one of these, because I don't want lines to go from one to the next to the next. I just want them all to trace back to the main node, so I need a tracer for each. So I'm going to create a null object here, and I'm going to call this tracer, and then I'm going to create another null object, and I'm going to call it sub tracers. And just for my organizational, I'm going to stick it under here because it doesn't matter. I'm going to duplicate this tracer. And then for the sub tracers, I need three, one for each. So I'm going to go into the tracer and I'm going to remove everything out of the trace link. And remember, I want to go from my node one to my sub nodes. So I'm going to do node one to sub node one. And I'm going to repeat that process for each additional one of these. And there you go. And like before, this animation is technically already set. So let's see. I want to come out here. I'm going to add keys for all of these. I'm going to zero out these keys. So now you can see here's the animation. So this is a basic setup, and I just took this setup and then I repeated it all the way around. Now you can see in this setup, it's set up exactly the same way with the tracers and the sub tracers. And the only thing I changed here is I added a little jiggle deformer to give myself a little bit of secondary animation. Let me show you what that looks like. So you can see it's got a little bit of bounce. So here's my jiggle deformer. And I just dropped the stiffness down and the drag and I increase the spring and the iterations. And then to add another thing of secondary motion on it so that these guys aren't exactly always in the same place but they're floating around a little bit, I took a vibrate tag and you can see I have the settings really low. I have the frequency set to 0.35 and it's different for each node. And then I did the amplitude at 20, 20, 20 and it's also different for each node. So that gives you a little extra animation that I didn't have to keyframe. So at the end of setting this entire animation up, I went in and added it all to a null object, and then I just added an extra keyframe to have it rotate around. So that's about it for this setup. So I'm gonna show you a couple different setups that I did. Like I said before, you can do this a bunch of different ways. Just in my case, I wanted to have a little more control over the animation and the style, but these other ways do work as well. So in this case, I went through and I created a cloner setup, and let me show you what this one looks like.
So in this case, what I did was created a sphere. I stuck that inside of a cloner. I set the cloner to object. And then I'm using this platonic as my base. And I set the cloner to vertex. So it's creating a sphere at each vertex of the platonic. Let me show you what that platonic looks like. Now I took a correction tag onto the platonic so that I could get an irregular shape. So that gives us our first set. And then from here, I took that cloner and I did a grid array set that to random and I've got three three and three and I'm animating the size so you can see when it gets to here it scales up from that point and then I added a third cloner that does exactly the same thing the values are slightly different but it's still grid array and the size is different and that also animates and i stuck very top cloner and i stuck that into the tracer object and in this case i'm tracing the paths of each one of these now the downfall of this setup is that we're using trace paths because we're using trace paths i can't give it secondary motion because it will trace that secondary motion but you could always animate the camera to get a little bit of variation and then I created one other setup. I'm using X particles to shoot out particles and those particles shoot out their own particles and those particles shoot out another set of particles. So let me show you how this one animates. Now the same thing goes here. I can't add any secondary motion because I'm tracing the paths. Let me show you I created it. So I created an emitter and I set that emitter to shoot out eight particles I have it set to shot and I'm using a sphere as my emitter shape you can see my emitter right there then I went into the question section and I set up a question set to particle age so let's take a look at that so under particle age I set it equals to 20 so when the particle age is 20 it's going to trigger this action and my action is control spawning so if you look in here control spawning I have the spawning set to relative to the source particle, so it actually shoots off of it relatively in the same direction that the particle is traveling. And I have it spread 70%. I also have it set to only shoot out five particles with a variation of two. And I have it set to spawn only once. Then I created a, a spawn emitter. Inside this spawn emitter, I created another question. Now this is my second layer, and I'm using particle age again and I'm telling it that if my particle age is greater than 20 I want to freeze the particles and I'm also from here creating another spawn so this is my blue tier here and that setup is the same as a previous setup I added this control spawning and I have it set relative to source particle 80% spread and spawn only once and then I created the spawn emitter right here and added a question to that Again, particle age, and I have it set to greater than 20, and I just am freezing the particles. So when it gets 20 frames, it freezes these particles. So this is what it looks like. So that's about it. I definitely encourage you to play around with these settings and this setup and make your own. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you have any comments or questions, leave in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and check out the blog at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Sev, and we'll catch you next week. <laughs>